what's going on YouTube, Alabama Reloader here. So, rolling down Highway 431. <clears throat> and it is currently, well, it's snowing right now. You can't really see it, just barely. Uh, but today is Friday, December 23rd, and 2022. And if you're in sort of the southeast, you know that supposed to be like one of the coldest days on record or something crazy like that uh, they're talking negative 10 to 15 mile per hour or negative uh, 10 to 15 uh, degree temps with the wind chill you know pushing it as low as like maybe negative 20 you know just unheard of temperatures for the south right and in alabama for sure so what does that mean? That means you go sit in the woods. No, not, not really. I, I typically wouldn't hunt when it's this cold, um, but the way things have lined up, uh, my buddy Daniel hit me up and was like, hey, let's head over to, uh, let's head over to some public land. He said, I'll take my boat. You know, we, we'd already scouted a couple of spots back in the summer. Uh, that would be pretty good by boat access and so he hit me up and was like hey can you go the 23rd and it just so happens to work out that that's the only day that I can really go hunting I've got so much other stuff planned and going on with the family and everything else throughout the, uh, the rest of Christmas uh, into the new years and so I'll have some days coming up in January possibly in February maybe uh, that I can go hunt but I got to get in the woods and this was our best opportunity to do it. It just so happened to coincide with, like I said, one of the coldest days <laughs> in recorded history here in Alabama. So we're just going to roll with that and see what happens. I'm going to take you guys along. I probably won't be able to, if I do get a shot on something, uh, probably not going to be able to film it because, again, I, I just film everything on my phone. I don't really have, I didn't bring my tripod. I don't think, plus setting my phone out in, uh, you know, minus 10 to 15 degree weather with the wind blowing constantly. Don't really know how much that thing would actually work when I when it came time for me to actually need it. So we're not gonna fool with trying to film any of that. I may just do uh, a couple of short video clips kind of throughout the day. Once I get set up, maybe in my spot, that type of stuff. We'll see, I don't know, but. You guys just stay tuned, follow along, and fingers crossed, man, we can get uh, get something on the ground. Stop here at the shell and meet up with my buddy. He's supposed to be heading over here. So, all right, we'll catch you guys later. Y'all stay tuned. All right, guys and gals, back again. My buddy Daniel, it's his birthday. Happy birthday, Daniel. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's cold uh, right now, 13 degrees, according to the Ford. A super whiz bang eighty thousand dollar truck that he's got um so yeah it's it's cold there's uh yeah pretty much almost nobody out here there was a couple of trucks parked right over there already put a boat in the water so at least we're not the only ones crazy enough to get after it today but Duck hunters are the only other insane people to do that. Yes, yeah, yeah. Duck hunters are the only other idiots that would be out in this. So, but all right, we just got to finish getting everything uh, situated, get the boat put in the water. So, yeah, y'all, uh, y'all stay tuned. I've got <laughs> got a ton of hot hands already opened up and ready to go. So, y'all stay tuned for some uh, some more footage. Catch y'all in a little bit. All right, boys and girls, there he is, back to pick me up. Got all my stuff. Hey, what you got in the boat there? Huh? Deer Slayer. Doe Slayer. Doe Slayer. So, so Daniel killed him a doe. It's his birthday. Congratulations, that's awesome. It's freaking cold. Uh, it's almost one o'clock in the afternoon now. So, got to hit the road, got to get on the boat and get out of here. So, y'all stay tuned. When I get to the house, I'm going to do kind of like a gear review of the stuff I use to help make this hunt possible. Oh, dude, it's ridiculous. So, 
I got icicles on my goatee, man. All right, y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, so I promised a follow-up <clears throat> back at the house with some of the gear that I used to make uh, today's hunt possible because when you're sitting in single-digit uh, temperature situations with wind chill and the negatives, then you're going to need some extra stuff that you typically wouldn't normally use otherwise. So, uh We'll just kind of get right into it. Uh, one of the things that I struggle with due to my condition, I'm looking at my wife when I say that because she just rolled her eyes. She rolls her eyes every time I say that. But I have hypothyroidism, which um, is managed through medication. It's not really that big of a deal now. Uh, untreated over long periods of time, it could potentially be a big deal. But uh, we caught it, thankfully. And a couple of issues that stem from that though are my hands and my feet stay cold nonstop. Doesn't matter. Um, so you can imagine in extremely cold weather, that's sort of mission critical for me is warm hands, warm feet, and I can pretty much withstand anything. So we'll start off with uh, what I used today to keep my hands warm. These are super amazing. Uh, my wife got these for me and you can pick them up www.voltheat.com. Uh, they have their pretty much um, electric gloves, I guess, for lack of a better word. You got this little battery pack inside, and then what you do, this portion unzips, and you plug in this little battery pack. These packs are rechargeable. Of course, I'm not going to be able to drag it out normally i just pull it right out no problem but of course when i'm trying to do a video it's not going to work not going to be cooperative there we go so it just plugs right in a little battery pack um it's probably dead at this point oh oh there you go you hold it down until the blue lights come on when all four are on that means this thing is heating to its max um I guess temperature and but at that setting it only runs for like an hour and then you pretty much run your battery out so you just kind of press and hold the power button and it decreases in intensity each time you do that so now it's down to the lowest setting which is what I ran this on all day um, so yeah you can mess around with that whatever you want to do and I believe the I believe the lowest setting runs for like eight hours, which works good enough uh, just to keep your hands warm enough to where it's not gonna be too terrible uh, on you while you're sitting out there in the woods, but highly recommend those. Those things are amazing. <coughs> um, you know, if you don't wanna use those, just go with some gloves and some hot hands. That will be obviously the other recommendation, but I really enjoy using those, uh, the heated version. They work great, so. Highly recommend those. To go along with hands, this is one of the best purchases I've ever made um, as far as hunting accessories go. This is just a hand warmer from Cabela's. Nothing fancy. This thing was probably 15 bucks. Bought it several years ago, and it's really just no frills. You got a little, got a little belt. You just attach it around your waist, put it in front of you, put your hands in there. And that's it. It's got some thin slit insulation. Uh, you throw a couple hot hands in there. That's normally where I keep my phone. I'll put a couple hot hands in there, keep my phone uh, in there. And then, of course, if I need to use my phone, I'll take my hand out of the glove, use my phone, you know, put it. Typically, I'll put my hand back in my hand warmer here because I've got those hot hands in there just to warm it back up real quick. And then I'll throw it back in my, my heated glove. So, Highly recommend that. And then for feet, <clears throat> for feet, you, you really, I mean, you're not gonna get any better than these. These are Icebreaker Boot Blankets XL, size extra large. And it's not so much just the boot blanket by itself because that's really not gonna keep your feet warm. Um, I don't care what boots you have on, I don't care what anybody says, if you just, walk out there in single digit temperatures 
throw these on your boots when you get to your stand, your feet are still gonna get cold. So what you have to do, load them down with hot hands. That's how many hot hands I had between both boot blankets today. So I don't, I don't know, however many that is, probably 10, probably five per boot blanket. Um, yeah, so I just throw a few in there. I know some people like to use these stick on toe warmers and, and all of that, but for me, I just like the, the regular ones, grab those, throw them in there, make sure they're good and hot when you throw them in. So that's what I did today. I opened them up while we were on the way to uh, the boat ramp. That way they're good and hot and I go ahead and throw them in here. And then once I get to where I'm going, uh, to the place I wanna hunt, then of course I'll slip these on. They're already extremely warm and my feet were warm all day. Had no issues with my toes or feet getting cold. So that was great. And then one kind of, I guess maybe often overlooked piece of gear is a simple scarf. That's all this is. This is just a simple scarf. I think it's like navy blue or something, whatever. Um, wrap that around your neck once you get to where you're going. Kind of tuck that in your jacket and that it's a game changer, I promise you. My brother turned me onto that trick and it really does save the day. Keeping you warm, holding in that heat around your neck and head. So along with that are the toboggan choices you can go with. I mean, obviously there's a million different versions out there. But today, um, what really helped was having something like this that covers a majority of your face just because we were taking a boat to the to the place we were gonna hunt. Extremely cold temperatures, that wind was brutal. So having something that covers your face uh, during those type of conditions, that's a must. And then, you know, if I'm sitting in the stand or something or I'm gonna hunt, I, I have Nomad. Uh, camo that's kind of what I use and so I just have their their toboggan their little little hat toboggan deal here so I just switched to that and then when I was walking out I switched over because of course you got to have your orange on switched over to the Panola brand um, orange beanie uh, works really well so and I like this when you're walking um, because it's not super heavy so you're not gonna you know, sweat to death wearing that. I really like how breathable breathable that one is. So that's great for when you're walking around the woods and you gotta have your orange on, so. And then I guess to top it off, which I didn't actually use this to, I took it with me. I put 20 ounces of coffee in it this morning at 3.15 a.m. and it sat outside. This is the Yeti. I don't know how many ounces this one actually holds. I don't know what model who knows it's made in china no idea but but put 20 ounces of coffee in it this morning about 3 15 a.m and i didn't open it until 2 30 p.m i took it with me just in case um but i never got to the point where i was cold enough to even want coffee while i was out there in the woods so I never even opened it, um, but it sat outside, you know, next to my, next to the tree that I was sitting, uh, sitting at the base of. It just sat there on the ground for hours today. So sat outside in single digit temperature um, environment and the coffee was still warm. Wasn't hot, but it was warm enough to drink at 2.30 this afternoon. So didn't open it while I was out there, but it again, it sat in extremely cold temps all day and kept coffee warm enough to where you could drink it once I got home. So sure, it would have been perfectly fine and it would have been hot if I would have drank it while I was out in the woods. It would have performed great, but that's just kind of, hey, this thing works really, really well. I'm sure there's a, you know, several other brands you could go with that do the exact same thing, but in this particular case, this is what I have, this is what I took. Those were the results. So that's it. <clears throat> Those are sort of the, the key elements that made the hunt successful. If you want to go see pictures, go check out the Instagram, my Instagram page. That's where I posted the pictures. That's the picture of the doe that my buddy Daniel killed. So you go check that out. Uh, a couple other photos I took throughout the trip. So there you go. Hope you all enjoy it.
Y'all have a good one. Merry Christmas. We'll catch y'all next time.